What is good? We're back. And we're fresh cracking. Ah, bad crack. Piss poor crack. Weak crack. I'd give, give that a five, five, six. Ooh, that's generous. Generous? Hmm. Seemed all right. I mean, Mm-mm. all right. <laughs> What's good, everybody? We're going to do some breakout players for your pleasure. We'll talk a little second year breakouts, whether you're, uh, you know, on board or abandoning ship kind of kind of deal here. Uh, but, um, you know, obviously a couple of these second year guys have established some some pretty good value. But I don't think really any of the bigger name wide receivers from that from that last class have really lost too much pizzazz luster. Uh, on their, Depends on, on their who name. you ask. Um, but, you know, as far as the drafts that we've been doing, even if they are some of the lower end guys that, that you know, people might be a little concerned about, they're, they're still holding, you know, on pretty strong in the in the fairly valuable rounds there. Um, in the drafts that we've been doing, for sure. For yeah, sure. so. Uh, we're, there's there not a ton of Twitter people in these drafts. So we're, we're hard at work. Twitter. Building our own ADP. I mean, it, this seems to be pretty split on some of these guys that we're going to talk about on Twitter as well um, and, and amongst the community. But we're, 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 we're steady working, building our own ADP. We're, we're refining the uh, inner workings of that so we can share it with our patrons. And we'll, we'll certainly be citing it on, on our... Uh, on this channel here uh be sure to like subscribe comment below all that jazz um and we're you know we'll, we'll be hammering out plenty of shows uh for your pleasure uh, but if you are a patron you get to be in the mock drafts and help contribute and we are doing some general public uh mocks throwing out there on twitter so that's why you should follow on twitter at the ff dynasty um and you can hop in those and that way it's not just our uh, group think group think of of our patrons doing that we'll, we'll we'll balance it out with some general public the gp some pweebs plebs however you uh, pronounce that um all right so who's number one let's start with jameson williams got to talk about um, jameson he seems to be uh fairly divisive if you if you mention his name on twitter it's either you know all hail or <laughs> you know get rid of him <laughs> Shout out to John Knobloch. Used to crush the get rid of him. Love that um, phrase. You know, I, I, I'm I'm not going to sit here and you know, spoiler alert, really say that I'm ready to bail on any of these guys after one year in the league and and all sorts of circumstances for all. There's a lot of context that goes on with all these and and some reasons and you could call them excuses if you want to. Uh, but you know, if I drafted him for the most part, I'm probably hanging on to him here unless you know I'm I'm really feel like I'm really upgrading to a, a premium position um as, as one of the top five to ten players in their position um, so if you're watching on youtube which you definitely should be if you're on the podcast go check out the youtube show uh we this is what people are mad about it's the snap share right well, i wouldn't say no i don't think i don't think and the everybody, targets per snap i don't think everybody per route run necessarily mad about that i think in general you know that that, that is something that has been brought up as a quote-unquote issue and we've kind of talked about it like i i don't care like that's what they it's should smart. have done they it's said fuck. they said that they were going to kind of do that off the rip that they weren't going to rush him back he like, never had more than 25 percent snap share in a game right i mean if if he, if he comes into this year and he only has 25 percent snap share for the entire season then we got a problem but i'm not worried about a guy coming off an acl who you know the lions have been the lions for so long and you're trying to rebrand what what you guys are and and you finally do something semi-smart and some of the uh, smarty pants nerds want to criticize you for it because they don't actually care about that player up there. They just care. They see that number, the 25% snap share and like, well, how, how come he can't get on the field? And it's like, well, there's, there's slow wasn't playing. He helping the lines win. And right. why didn't he get more targets per sh- route run? They're and making sure their guy's right. Like they probably shouldn't have even got him any action at all, but they right. deemed no, it I'm, worth so it to is, get a little so bit. I think this, this was very, th- that's a smart move by them by just getting his feet wet a little bit, get him out there, let him feel his what speed, happened. He got move around some defenses. There was multiple times where he did get behind players, um, behind defenses, you know, so 
this year you're going to get a whole off season of of potentially it would seem like Jared Goff will be their guy at least for a year or three. You know, you're going to get a whole off season with Jamison Williams and St. Brown being your guy. We don't know what the fate of Swift's going to be and we don't know what the rest of that receiving core will necessarily look like post draft. Um, but right now those are their two big dogs and big dogs got to eat. Yeah. You know, so they have to you know what, well, what they won't be big dogs anymore. <laughs> what people like to then go back to which you know our, our guy Quinn Torres on Twitter he's a big uh, Jameson hater he's telling you to sell him and using words like never and won't be and a lot of definitive fucking statements there for something that you have no fucking clue that he can't be the number one that he'll never demand targets like he's just not that kind of guy best case scenario is Deshaun Jackson First of all, if he's Deshaun Jackson in his prime, you're fucking stoked. Second of all, I think he's much more than just Deshaun Jackson in his prime. I think that's that for me, that'd be almost worst case scenario. Obviously, maybe not quite to the level of Deshaun, but like a player like Deshaun. And, and then citing the fact that, you know, well, it's St. Brown's team and that he won't be the guy. Like, first of all, the good thing about him is he doesn't necessarily need to be the guy every game because he can make your play in one game. One, uh, <laughs> one, what make your play and or make your day in one play. <laughs> um, but, and then you also want to come back to the, the silly bullshit of, well, he's not good against press. And it's like, all right, man, I went back. I watched a couple. Uh, I watched one game to be fair. I didn't really watch a couple games. I watched one game. It was the Georgia SEC championship game. And I, I didn't know what the statistics were going in. I didn't even look them up. I just was like, all right, well, I'll you watch crushed a game. that game. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah. One, I want to start off with saying, like, this should be a coachable thing. How much press is going on in college football that you think that this is something that can't be changed at the next level, especially by a, this is the same argument as a running back who can't catch. If he's an elite level athlete, you don't think that these guys can be coached to figure out how to get off press. Furthermore, how many guys are pressing in college, you know, that, that are it's doing like anything in Georgia and Alabama? I don't That's think like there's it. a whole lot, you yeah. know that that is being run so you're probably getting a skewed sample and and will there be guys that bother him in the nfl i'm sure guys in the nfl get bothered by random fucking corners or really good corners sometimes it just depends on how your skill set matches up you want to press him you better damn well make sure you press the shit out of him and he doesn't get off the line because if he's even he's fucking leaving like good luck and i went back and watched that game and ringo's on him who is one of the better corners in all of college football. And then I don't know what the other, maybe Kirkpatrick or I, I don't remember 11 was the other guy. There is multiple times in this game where one of the times Ringo presses him, he gets open deep. One of the times Ringo presses him, it's a foul, doesn't get called. And then on the next series, he goes to the other side and 11 presses him and fouls him on the slant because they can't fucking handle him. He's too quick. He's too fast. He gets off and then they're holding them like, yeah, I'm sure sometimes he gets jammed up. I'm sure a lot of college players get jammed up. Maybe Jonathan Mingo isn't getting jammed up at the line because he's six foot, 220 pounds. Jameson Williams, 6'1", 180. I mean, yeah, I'm sure if you got your hands on him on a rep or two, you might be able to stop him from getting off the line. But to say that that's, that's a problem and he's going to be jammed and to furthermore say that he's just going to be a deep threat guy, like, again, he had seven catches for like 184 yards in this game. He would have been the number one wide receiver drafted if he didn't have an ACL tear, most likely. And, mm -hmm. and Alabama probably wins the national championship uh, in, in, in that particular uh, year. You know. 21, yeah. It, it's just it, it's a crazy like he also caught like two or three screens and took those for 10 yards and he had another play where he kind of ran you know the jet the jet motion jet sweep around the back fake jet sweep and caught it on the other side ran it again for another 10 yards and to say that he's not great with the ball in his hands I think is asinine like is he making a, is he is he is he Debo Samuel with the ball in his hand? No, but he's not supposed to be. And mm -mm. He, he's electric with the ball in his hands. To, to be saying sell this guy and to say bet against this guy that it's not that the breakout isn't going to happen and these other things is the dumbest shit ever. Like pick another guy. Like this is just yeah. this is the wrong guy to pick to put all your eggs in the basket of saying he's never going to be to, to all these definitive things. It's yeah. just silly. Like this, this guy is, well, that is, is what Twitter wants. They want right. you to be definitive and negative in your definity. Right. And it does seem silly to pick a game breaker like this man to bet against. I'd be wanting to bet for him because we're gambling here a bit. We're playing a game and these are the, 
type of fucking players that, yes, he can make your day in one play, but he can evolve into more of that, right? <laughs> I mean, maybe he is. Who cares? Well, I, I just... You did say I make your play in one gay. I, I don't know what that earlier. <laughs> I just missed... A little uh, Freudian yeah. slip there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to bet against the game breakers in an, in a point that that you didn't make that I you've I've heard you make before is that everyone knows that this man was gonna get the well, ball right you know and and they're trying to stop him and they fucking couldn't you might stop him for three quarters but he's gonna get you somewhere and mm-hmm. and that's that's still your day and right it's, there and it's devastating to the defense right you know and and how much does that dictate the rest of the game right. what are you gonna Just do you're gonna to roll coverage him. over top of him you're gonna jam him with one over top you're gonna jam him solo because you jam him solo that's not gonna work out all game he's gonna get you he's he's quick enough to get you like yeah he's good in the red zone he scored 15 touchdowns he can he can take it the distance at any time from anywhere on the field you can throw him a screen and he can go like is he going to dump truck people no but he can make moves and he's a fantastic athlete he's electric just like you said he's the guy who everyone in the stadium knows is getting the ball and you still can't do shit about it I'm just not going to bet against that guy am I saying he's going to break out and be a top five 10 dynasty wide receiver no I'm, I'm not going to go that far but it, he certainly could be and you know St. Brown can continue to gobble up a decent amount of volume and yeah, there may, there may be games where Jamison Williams only has two or three catches a game, but there's also going to be games catches games where he has seven catches in a game. As this goes on, you're gonna you're gonna go ahead and develop chemistry and and develop you know a way to play. They 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 drafted him, and not only did they draft him, they didn't rush him back out there. They got his feet wet. They did this in a proper manner. He missed all the offseason. There's no reason to rush him out there. Him and golf don't necessarily have a rapport to go out there. Now they get all offseason. And then if you want to bring up the point of that, you know, well, they can't support two wide receivers to be in the upper echelon of things. That's that's bullshit. Like golf has supported, you know, a decent cast of wide receivers. And Ben Johnson stayed around in this offense. The reason that you're betting on the Lions at all this year is you're hoping that this offense takes the next step forward, which is why Ben Johnson stayed around. He was probably one of the hottest offensive minds to be uh, in the coaching search. And he said, no, nah, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to do the damn thing. I got some unfinished business. So you're hoping that the lions take a step forward. The offensive line's great. You know, golf gets another year in this system, gets more comfortable. They're not starting over with another OC. I think all things point very positively for Jamison Williams. Kirk cousins can support two guys. Jimmy Garoppolo has supported two guys at once. Tua couldn't support two guys. God forbid Kua couldn't support two guys. And look at that. You have you got a good system and you have a capable quarterback. You could support two fucking guys. It's a stupid argument. Like I just there, there's just not too many reasons that I want to bet against Jamison Williams here and tell you that he's a sell and tell you that he's not going to break out. I know it's 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 trendy to go one way or the other. And I would lean way more towards breakout likely and and be excited that you you're buying them in the fifth sixth round of startups right now and be excited for for you know what could be next because if the, the thing is he's a killer and if he if he hits it's going to be bananas uh, and if he doesn't necessarily hit it's still going to be okay it's just going to be a little more boomer bust and that's you know on the sell side i'm sure that's what you're trying to avoid is the boomer bust guys but you know i, I think he's he offers a lot more than just a vertical field stretcher yeah, I mean, looking at his 2021 stats in college, he was uh, fourth in yards after the catch per route run or per right. reception, right? Right. 9.1 yak per reception. Now, that is kind of factored in with all these long, deep balls, right? right? You get, he's going to get open. He's going to get it. Like I said, if he's even, he's leaving. Him. So when you throw the ball, if, if, if they're even in coverage, he's going to he's he's winning that race uh, nine and point eight times out of right. ten. But, you know, only he had nine missed forced tackles compared to 14 for Traylon, which we really regard Traylon as a tackle breaker. And he was had 43 first downs. So that's like that's another good stat that people like. That's I think it's tied it's in the 30 range uh, for first downs. Mechie was probably moving a lot of sticks for them, but 43 is nothing to scoff at. And this is just fact. This isn't factoring in the postseason at all when we do these type of metrics and and weigh them against other guys. So I mean, I just yeah, I just can't bet against this man. And looking at our ADP, he is fiftieth overall, which is uh, let's see, that's like 
six two, which is kind of high. Our guys like him. We like him. I've taken him high. I don't in have some DLS ADP to bounce it against, but I wouldn't imagine it's terribly far off from. I could look that up. Um, from what it is, but going against he, he's one pick a, ahead of Jameer Gibbs. You know where I won't look? Keep trade cut that <laughs> homeless shelter for a website. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I I I agree. I'm I'm not. I I I would lean more towards. I'm I'm on I'm on the ship. I'm certainly not abandoning. I'm not selling for you know unless you could really move up to you know a, a, one of those top two or three round players in a startup. I'm I'm gonna hang on to my Jamison Williams, and you know I think he'll ascend himself uh, to that area without much without much problem. Um, so I like where the lines are. I like what Jamison Williams is. Um, you know, Chark's out of there. I actually don't know who their third receiver is off the top of my head. I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, you know, they, they could easily draft. Yeah, Reynolds and Khalif. And right. They could easily draft. And, and Swift, if healthy, is going to, you know, be a factor Campbell in the receiving game. Campbell said he's going to be a part of their plans. Um, you know, and Monty will be a part of that receiving game too. But this is just a, this should be a good team moving forward. And, and, you know, now they really, you know, are we worried about the Packers? Not really. Are we worried about the Bears? Probably not. So we're worried about maybe the Minnesota Vikings. That's, you know, that's basically half of their games. Um, so March ADP has them at 75 and on DLF. So we have them a significant amount. Uh, like at least 60 a, or 50? I think I said 50. Yeah. So uh, that's that's pretty high compared to 75, right? That's that's two whole rounds ahead. Yeah, but I'm very comfortable taking him in the fifth or the sixth round. Yeah, 75. That's a is, that's is, a fucking is, steal. Yeah, that's uh, that's not even fair to get him. And and so he's going around guys like George Pickens and let's see, jo- Jordan Love, Jordan Addison, Deontay Johnson. Jordan Love's a guy we need to talk about, but this is for another show. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I, I think I think I'm I'm staying on board with Jameis Williams. Right ahead of Amari Cooper and Quinton Johnson, I'd much rather have Jameis Williams and those two guys. You know, no most, question. Yeah, most likely. You taking him over Deontay? Uh, yeah, I'll take Jameis Williams. Yeah, over Deontay like we're, ta- we're we're trying to get this breakout player, yeah. right? I'm on board. I'm not jumping ship. I, well, I, I'm trading for Deontay Johnson too, but sure, um, I like the value there. Um, but I'm I'm hanging on to. Uh, Jameson Williams. You want to roll to the next guy here? Sure, let's do it. All right. So the next guy on on kind of talking to feet. You know, is he? We, we think second year breakouts coming. Are we all on board? Or are we? You know, we we abandon and ship here and, and selling for spare parts. But and and for for, <laughs> for, for for Traylon here, I think the biggest concern is probably the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Like we're just we we don't know if the volume is going to be up high enough. But I, I believe what people are hanging on to when he played was it was a target share i believe in like the 17th ish uh percent range which is is good um for especially for rookies um and i know i know some people really like that um i'm not worried about the ecosystem right it's, you're just worried. The Titans about, are always like decent. Well, and they're a good environment. You're, just, you're they're worried good about culture. You're worried about system. volume. I should say. But who else they got? Right. Which well, maybe they bring just, somebody in. More, more or less. The bigger passing, question is the quarterback. Court, well, that's part of the ecosystem. Quarterback and passing volume are, are things. When you know when he's out there, the targets should be coming just fine. Uh, you know, we'll see what they do in the draft. They, there, there was some. Talk of maybe the Titans being a team that that might trade up to get a quarterback. Um, we don't know. Maybe the uh, Cartwright, the uh, old Niners player personnel guy, or whatever uh, job he held there. Maybe they end up striking a deal for for some Trey Lance action. Um, mm. You know, or maybe it's, I don't know if I like that, but maybe it's Tannehill. Um, I, I, I'm I have, super fine with Tannehill being right. Traylon Burks' quarterback. And the, there was so much working against Traylon in his f- freshman season, right? The whole offseason, he just continued to plummet in value because asthma and out of shape and all, you know, can't practice and all this stuff, can't make it through practice and then has some injuries, comes in, gets five targets, six targets, two targets, three targets the first four games. Not the worst, right? Especially for a player that you weren't sure if they – you know, who's playing in the fourth quarter of preseason games, mm-hmm. right? Then he misses some time with an injury, comes back, three targets, seven targets, four targets, one target, 
Misses some more time. So this that's an MO, right? He missed a bunch of time. But when and that was a concussion, that second one. Brutal hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they probably shouldn't have even come back. Had eight targets to end the season. Only and, and I think he might have even even while in that playing time, there was some nicked up this kind of going on as well. Right. So a lot working against him in his rookie season, and he still showed you what he can do. You know, he was still making big plays down the field. Catch, caught a couple touchdowns, I guess just one. But he was definitely making some big plays in the passing game, and you can give it to him on the end of round, and you never really got to see the best of what Traylon Burks can do. We're banking on a breakout, right? Looking at his ADP on DLF, he's at 68. They got him higher than Jameson Williams, and I think we have him a little lower than Jameson. We got him down at 63. So that's I feel like that's probably properly rated. But to take a guy there in the seventh round who didn't do much his rookie season, other than if you watched with your eyes and could see the plays that he was making, and then for a bulk of that time, they didn't have Tannehill either. So he didn't even have a, a quarterback. And if he could get Tannehill, a healthy Tannehill and a healthy Traylon Burks, there's enough volume and to, for him to take a step forward in year two with the with the explosion that he has and the downfield prowess and the tackle-breaking ability and the yak that, I mean, yeah, I, he's going to break out, right? That's I don't, what we're talking I don't about. Fucking, I don't care if you if, if Traylon has four things that he does. If you... Run him, run a, run an end around. Run him with a screen. Run a drag, and then run him down the field in some way, shape, or form. I, that I don't care. Like those are the things that he does well. So let's do those things. That's what we need to trust these organizations to do. To get caught up in, you know, will these, will this, will all this stuff expand? Well, you kind of hope so, and that that's what you want a little bit. But I also want you doing the things that you do best, and mm-hmm. and the things. That, that, that he does best are, are those things that I just kind of mentioned. Like, you know, kind of line of scrimmage stuff. You can get him run across the field, catch get get the ball, get your ball in the hands, and, and get running down the field. Is he, you know, extremely explosive? He's He seems like he's a little bit more of built-up speed. Like, if he can get going. He's a locomotive. The... the the top end speed we know is there from from the GPS tracking from from college mm-hmm. is is the is the necessarily real start quick and, and bursty stuff there. No, not really. But that's where the, the size and stature right. comes in. The fucking size, bro. Right. 225 like that makes up for a lack of quickness because it's you, you can't get through that man. Right. You can't body him. He's no. too physical no, no. for you. And when he does get the ball in his hands, you're about to get fucking truck sticked, you know, or run away from right so there's a lot of things working in Traylon's favor I feel like no I, the, the problem is the Titans and are they going to be rebuilding what's going to happen with their quarterback situation looks like they're holding on to Tannehill but there was some talk of him possibly getting cut I don't necessarily love them bringing in Trey Lance just because that's a big unknown I know what I can get from Tannehill I understand that you don't like Tannehill and that you don't necessarily want him as your f- fantasy quarterback but like shit he's not too many years away from being like the QB2 overall and I don't know who was that high, but maybe could, for I, a chunk I, of, of a maybe season. maybe the end, of, maybe like the last yeah. eighteen eight games or something. But I mean, Derrick Henry's not getting any younger. He doesn't look like he's slowing down, but he does have a, a foot screw. There's some there's some talk about maybe them moving on from him in one way, trading him or, form. or it, something. It, it just seems. The, I think the biggest negative for him is one. I think you pointed out that that you didn't you didn't get the whole season and the whole picture to see him really develop and get a chance for a long stretch of continuity. And the Titans kind of fell apart at the end of the season last year. Everybody was so many up injuries. Yeah. And it wasn't that much fun to watch, um, you know, and then on top of that, you know, you're, you're worried about just the direction they're going in right this minute. And, and if it's, you know, they're, they're a team that I have a lot of confidence in because I think the coach, you know, just yeah, exudes great coach. confidence. Great fucking coach. And I think they can be in any game, and I think they've proven that. They can win anywhere and go anywhere. People and, play and down to their level almost. But I don't mean to say that in a negative way. They, like, make you right. earn every little thing. And the special teams is always on point. And the defense is always good. And the offense can run the ball and control it and move the sticks. And, like, even with all those injuries, they're still competitive. And they just... They, they're never out of it mentally. They find a way, and they muck up that fucking game, and they make it fucking hard for you to come in here and play our team. Nobody wants to play the Titans. That's not fun. They play physical. 
they, they you know they're fucking in your face like that right. nobody wants to play the titans right but yeah. no one ever gives them any credit either everyone's always like oh the titans they've like i don't understand the amount of hate that the titans get in the media world like it might, it might uh, well they just don't subscribe to the new age of things and and they were they had been getting it done w- doing it a different way there for a minute and unless um, you win and, the super bowl every year you're right, the worst which is silly because there's only one team that can do that and you know and they're not going to do it every year right and and you know unless you're fucking Tommy and billy b then there's a, there's only a handful of of upper echelon quarterbacks so you know you got to figure out ways to do it things differently and the Titans have. Now I do think that they're probably there is probably a fundamental shift of how they're going about doing business. Uh, but Traylon's with, a with part the of new, that plan. with the new GM. Well if you want to play mental gymnastics, you know, you can new GM. You got the new GM who's coming from that Niners staff system player had it had his hands in kind of who they were drafting and, and what they were doing and where they were going. Traylon Burks would fit in I think extremely well in a San Francisco style offense. Yeah. So if, yeah. if you want to, like I said, you want to play mental gymnastics and, and peace GM trickling down to the coach, trickling down to the system uh, that maybe they might kind of have in place a little bit more. And, and I thought they did do a fine job of, of doing the things that, that Traylon did well. And if you want to be upset about that, you can be, but like I would prefer as a guy who's in his embryonic stages mm. to do things I'll you drink know, to that. <laughs> to do things, uh, you know, that the worst, like you should be, you should be strung up by your feet to, to, if you're not doing those things to put your players in the best positions and doing, we I talk about it all the time. Like you need to be able to put these play. the good coaches are going to put their players and, and play to their strengths, drafting them accordingly and knowing that, Hey, we're going to do this around them. It stunk that I, I don't know what was going on in the off season with Traylon. It was kind of weird. It made it definitely gave you some pause. Hopefully, you don't it made him va- a, a value in a rookie draft. Hopefully, you don't you don't hear any of that this right, off season, yeah. and and we can just move forward. And we don't we don't exactly know. The only thing that gives me pause again is, are they rebuilding, and are you going to have to hang on for? But you know, there's plenty of receivers who who put up big numbers on a garbage fucking team, and Traylon could certainly do that. If he can stay on the field and stay stay healthy through training camp, get this conditioning and asthma and whatever figured out, I, I'm not I'm not concerned. And I think there was many breakouts for Traylon of seeing the, what he could really do, and he just didn't get to see it all in one uh, homogenized effort here. And and hopefully that's what you will get moving forward. So there there isn't an abandoned ship for for Traylon for me either. It's it's full steam ahead. I haven't lost confidence in him. Um, and, and, you know, it gives me almost more confidence to that they played to his strengths rather than making him into something that he isn't. So keep keep doing that. And, and I'll, I think Traylon Burks will end up being, you know, just fine in the in the long term for your fantasy um, value. And right now, the value, I think, is really good on him like that. You by the time you're drafting Traylon, you're you're you start looking around and going, there really isn't any more guys in a startup. That is, there isn't really any more guys that could be as big of a difference maker left out here uh, than than Traylon Burks. So, yeah, I'm trying to pull him up on Instagram to see what he's been doing. Cause it, like what are the what's he doing what now? He do, what's he doing? You I know? know what he's doing. Well, I just listened to uh, Buck, Bucky Brooks and Daniel Jeremiah talk about the top traits at all the positions in football and like what the top traits of the top players are. Mm-hmm. And shocking fucking intelligence, awareness, instincts, and work ethic. We're like at the top of every fucking skill, every position. It's like fancy that. I only like that if Daniel Jeremiah says it. Fancy that. Who, was he saying it? Or sure. Bucky, yeah, they talked about it for like Bucky 20 Brooks. minutes. Bucky often repeats what Daniel says. Uh, <laughs> Not I, my favorite talent evaluator. No? Bucky. Yeah, Bucky's I like, fine. I think DJ's fantastic. I don't, I don't dislike Bucky. Eh, he drains me a bit. Uh, he ain't been doing shit on Instagram. I like that. <laughs> Pick him up. He does have a story out. All right, let's keep it moving here. We we we're we're in on we're in on the breakout on Traylon. We're in on the breakout on Jamison Williams. 
Let's shift to a uh, to a running back here. Let's not make it all wide receivers. All right, you guys are getting all the glory right now. Well, no one cares about running backs um, except for maybe this guy. Let's let's shift to another second year player, uh, and we'll no, it's not Damian Pierce. We're gonna go James Cook here for a hot second. You thought maybe we're gonna get this backfield all to ourselves. Mm-hmm. You missed your cell window. But here comes Damian Harris. Right. Which and, people don't like. And we're already at the point in the offseason where McDermott's out there basically kind of putting uh, Josh Allen on blast a little bit saying, hey, you know, we, we got to change. We got to change some things. We can't have our quarterback out here taking these kind of hits, taking this kind of abuse. We need to, you know, maybe focus on the run game a little bit more that doesn't involve, you know, Josh Allen. Okay. Yeah. Which, it's all talk. You know, you don't want to you don't want to handicap Josh Allen, but it is something that, you know, the reason that I'm going to say that I'm kind of out on James Cook, even though I really liked what I saw at the end of last season is because until the Bills proved to me that they are down to actually stick to somewhat of a run game, I don't need you to be, you know, leading the league in running back rushes, but I just need you to have some sort of commitment one way or another to get your backs involved. And it seems like you've had such lofty goals and you bring in these specific skill set kind of guys and then you never fucking use them. You never scheme them It's the exact opposite of what we were just talking about. Traylon Burks potentially having is the opposite of what they do with the running back position. Now I do like Damian Harris to come in and, and give you, I think, I think Singletary is fine, but Damian Harris gives you a little bit different style of approach where you can, you can kind of lean on people, wear people down. And I think Damian Harris is, is just a very good, you know, player across the board. Not really great at necessarily anything, uh, but just a really good player all across the board. He's been in that division. I think it's a really good signing for them. I think it definitely does hurt, hurt some James Cook because I think the ability of 12 to 15 carries for Damian Harris is a real possibility, you know, per game. And he's not the worst in the passing game. He's He's, you know... Like I said, good all around. Mm. What you saw from James Cook at the end of last year was great. Um, it's just I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna pump the brakes a little bit now. At cost right now for James Cook, I'm fine with it. And it was the same thing last year. I was fine with where he ended up going in startups, which was that you know late eight through ten uh, round uh, for for. For James Cook, I'm I'm fine with grabbing him in the tenth round or whatever, and and sticking him on your bench because I I, I do like the player, and if if we can actually uh, see and and have what McDermott is talking about come to fruition, then there is some there there certainly will there's going to be great value in where you're getting Cook right now. Um, yeah, 103 overall in RDADP, ADP, which I think is uh, nine seven or something like that let's right. see where he is in dlf so ADP. you know uh for, for potentially I'm, so I'm, right saying, the same I'm not sure if the breakout's gonna necessarily come next year where I, I feel i feel pretty confident about burks and jameson being you know nice fantasy contributors for your team if, if healthy um you know james cook i, I d definitely you know don't don't feel Great, but it's not an indictment on James Cook. It's a, it's an indictment on them boys basically have proved to me over the last few years that I, I really want nothing to do with the running back position in Buffalo from a week to week, you know. Not only that, but this man, has no one checked his weight? Because he's sub 200. <laughs> so how could he ever be any good? Well, he was I'm pretty sure the same fucking people on Twitter who were talking shit about Jameer Gibbs like James Cook. I, I don't really understand what's going on here. Isn't James Cook like a f analytical guy that they liked? Um, Didn't the analytics community like James Cook? I, I can't confirm nor deny that. Um, it feels like that because we did a lot of battling against James Cook, and it's usually like the analytical community that we're going <laughs> at for liking someone they shouldn't. I was I wasn't spending the first rounder on him was really my only right um, right which glad you didn't and you know maybe I, some people are just arguing the cost of Gibbs 
right now isn't what they want to pay for him, uh, which is, I guess. Well, no, I, that no, no one ever talks about any fucking context. All there is is there's only seven backs who've ever been good that were under 200 <laughs> pounds. He's 199. If he was 201, it's a little bit different of a story. Still kind of the same thing, but like, man, the more I watch it, Gibbs, it's just like, oh my fucking God. Right. <laughs> that dude is outrageous. Well, you know, when it comes down to you know, these. But James Cook is not outrageous. James he, Cook is like, he, okay, he's, he, he can be good. He was he had stretches where he was very where good, and, good. A, and a lot of fun on the field yeah. uh, uh, to watch. And I, I don't necessarily you know need to break down any any stats or numbers because he did have some some decent numbers and some stretches. Um, but you know, uh, again, it really just comes down to the the ecosystem and and the Bills not proving to me the worth. And, and on the contrary, you know, I do like the value that you can get James Cook at right now. You so ever I'm take not, him in these I'm in not these ready mocks? to I'm sure in one of these mocks I've taken him. May, well maybe not. I don't know. I'm I'm usually A chain? Kind of doing some different things. James Cook. Around there. Um I think I gotta fucking take a little swing on A chain. There's yeah, there's there's not a, a incomplete on A chain whether I would or wouldn't. Um Pacheco or James Cook. I'll take James Cook. Your boy Zach Evans. Probably should take Pacheco, but I'll take Zach Evans. Al Al Geyer. Al Well, we'll get to Al. We'll get to Algier on the next show that we're doing. So yeah. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to speak on that. Okay. Just had a strap on at it. Is that a subliminal <laughs> hit? <laughs> <laughs> Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones. Alvin Kamara, I'm just out on right now. Just in the tenth round, there's just there's I don't know what the hell's going on. Like there's there's a legal thing from last year, and then there was just more footage that came out. I don't know when or what that's from. More footage? Yeah, just a, a casino beat up. And I'm just like I don't know what. Isn't that what that was? I have no idea. All I know is there just seems yeah, it was to, in Vegas. There just seems to be a whole lot of Man, bad news. He'll probably get like six games. Um, I'm good. I'm just pat. Me and Kamara were. It has no indictment on his how good he is as a player. I think. He's I mean, great. he's gonna miss a decent chunk of this season. Right. But it's not like he's done. No, but I mean, if he misses a decent chunk of this season. That's why he's a 10th round now we're, now we're 29 coming into next season. You know, I think he's 27, oh, yeah. going to be 28. Um, yeah, I don't think it has his birthday on there. but Not on here. Uh, but, you know, and I, 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 Kamara would not be in the 10th round right now if there wasn't so much uncertainty around him. You know what gives me... You know, I, we do some of these drafts, and he wasn't in these. But JMW, who's a, a, a consummate pro uh, of drafting, he he takes some stabs on Kamara. So you know that gives me a little confidence. <laughs> the, uh, it's not Kadarius the, Tony or James. It's, it's Cook. not the worst uh, stab. I, uh, Tony. Yeah, Tony went a whole round later. Um, so yeah. I'm off. I'm pumping the brakes and I'm abandoning ship on uh, James Cook. Cook, you know, for the purposes of what we're talking about at cost. I, I'm I'm still in. I would buy if somebody was was selling for cheap, um, but I would also sell him if somebody had more confidence in uh, him than I do to elevate myself to a few rounds above uh, style of player. So, all right. You got any anything else to add? Go buy a Garrett Wilson too. I mean, shit. If anyone's down on that man, there's some. Oh, hate. We could have we could have thrown him in there too. There's, there's some hate about what's going to be his QB situation, and they brought in Lazar. Oh, get the fuck out of here with all that shit. Look what he just did with Zach Wilson and Mike White. Yeah, you got a fucking guy who that guy showed you everything you wanted to see. He looked exactly like the player he was in college right. on the NFL field, clowning motherfuckers. Right. With no quarterback. The biggest thing, the biggest bummer for him is that Mike White's out of there. They're probably going to figure something out at quarterback that's not Zach Wilson. I assume it's going to be Aaron Rodgers, but I just can't even keep reading shit because I don't even know if the news coming across from some Twitter thing is even real or not anymore because yeah. people are just fed up. But like April 15th or 17th or something or 14th, players have to come back. And they're saying, like, Daniel Jeremiah was saying, like, they don't want this looming over love and everyone yeah, in the building yeah. at that point so that's not too far away should have some closure here on some of these situations but you got garrett wilson to basically smash and a lot of drafts that we were doing he was late first rounder 
um, because mm-hmm. of the situation necess- that he was in, mm-hmm. potentially. And he smashed, and now <laughs> you got what you wanted. And he now smashed, you're trying to figure and now out. Now you want to get out. out. Just you're everybody smarting yourself. Everybody has to be so fucking smart about yeah. about everything. Like you got, you, you seemingly got a really good player. If you could upgrade to Justin Jefferson, sure. Uh, but you know, other than that, I'm mostly just gonna fucking hang out with my guy Garrett Wilson. Yeah. So I'll right. take some stabs at George Pickens too. If we're talking about second year. Guys, like if anyone's down on George Pickens, if you the the next gen stat separation, all he does is run down. The f- Let me get some George Pickens. If, if just throw some feelers out for any of these second year wide receivers, yeah, John Dotson too. Fucking yeah. throw him in here. I, I would the very end. You don't like the ecosystem there either, but I do. Look like what John he did: Dotson. seven touchdowns, but, which I know he's going to regress, but still, like, come on. Incomplete on Pickens. I, I want to go. I'm, I'm too. Yeah. I'm too. Well, I'm just too caught up in the rookies right now and watching all that stuff. It's so I'm, you I need to. Saw what you I saw. need to go back and watch you actual know. games of of Pickens to really. I, I think I'm in camp. You, uh, but I really need to reassure myself of Pickens. All right. Well, we appreciate y'all for listening. Head over to Patreon.com/slash the FF Dynasty. We got. Drafts going on, rookie drafts, startup drafts, a lot of super flex. Casey's been pumping out extra shows, trying to do three a month over there. We've been on it almost every Monday or every other Monday. We skip we skip a week here and there, but some extra shows there for you. Discord channel, get access to that, get your questions answered. We got ADP coming. It's it's almost there. You're gonna we get got, rookie rankings. Yeah. So, yeah. Once we get the draft and we're rolling, I've been grinding through some rookie tape so a lot of stuff going on over there we'll we'll most likely have uh some dynasty rankings for your pleasure if you're listening on the podcast you don't want to come over and give us the 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 holler the five dollar holler just go hit subscribe on youtube or give us a five star review on itunes or spotify that that we appreciate that as well revelrybrewingco.com for the ff dynasty t-shirt we out cheer appreciate y'all for listening and we'll be back for your pleasurable, 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 pleasurable peace.